What's up? Hello, everyone. This is Courtney Rollins with the Life in Transitions Experts podcast, YouTube channel, Facebook group, all that good stuff. I'm the owner and founder of Estate Pro Service down here in Durham, North Carolina, where we focus on helping people with the property and stuff when it comes to probate. I'm a real estate investor, and one of the ways that I actually find properties are through uh, the state administration. Quite often, there's properties that are involved and people want some type of solution, whether they're trying to uh, find a way to keep the property or find a way to sell it for top dollar or sell it for speed and convenience very quickly. Either way, we try to provide the best, well, listen to what the issue is and provide the best solution for folks. Um, but life in transitions is all encompassing, you know, and I feel like uh, that as I continue pushing this, you know, lack of a better word, brand, I see so many places and spaces where I want to be able to contribute and share and learn. And I am a bibliophile. Um, I just love being able to read and learn and incorporate these, uh, what I learn into my work. And one of the things that I have to focus on is my communication skills. So I was encouraged a while back to take a look at different books that encourage communication and um, one of those uh, areas being communication in relationships uh, and marriages and all. And so uh, today we're going to, and I'm going to continue doing this every now and then, do a Life in Transitions Experts, a L-I-T-E light book review. And we're looking at the book, How to Improve Your Marriage Without Talking About It. Hey, also bonus, I'm actually getting married uh, actually in a couple of days down the yeah this weekend so it is very fitting very exciting to be able to uh, be able to gauge in that do that and i take that as seriously as i take my craft and so i'm working every day like kobe in the gym on my sales skills on understanding probate and on understanding myself my partner uh, so that i can be the strongest partner i can be so i take that very seriously and it's a lot of fun too um so this is by uh, dr patricia love and dr stephen stonesy and it was written in uh, April 3rd, 29th, 2008 is when it was published, I should say. That is actually my copy. That's why it's all beat up because I, when I read a book, I try to like read 10 pages a day and then basically read it four times before I can move on if it's a good book so that I can really delve into it and understand repetition is the, the mother, father, whatever of learning. So uh, that's what I try to do. And so one of the things that it says is uh, when it talks about source of conflict and shame, um, is that quite often a lot of our conflict comes from really uh, two sources. And this is by and large, and we're talking about men and women here, and I know there's all type of conversations about gender and all the different stuff, but by and large, a, a woman, this is what it's claiming, has their shame often comes from a fear of loss, de fear of deprivation, and they, they want to feel like they, they're you know, secure and things of the nature. And that fear of loss or fear of deprivation can come out in a lot of different forms and ways. And for a man, by and large, the fear of, is fear of inadequacy. Wanting to be able to protect, wanting to be able to provide is something that um, a, a man is, by and large, geared to want to do, socialized and through uh, uh, nature. And if those places aren't there, that's when people, they tend to lash out or withdraw. And this, what I really like about this book is it discusses how, well, I'll give you five takeaways. One is that connection is actually more important than communication. Um, a lot of times we're like, we need to improve our communication skills. However, the way we communicate can sometimes be very, very different from just a human being to a human being, but particularly when it comes to uh, partners in a relationship. And one of the key ways to connect is to know, to be explicit about what the values that you share that we share and so when you do find yourself in a space of conflict of that's possibly coming from fear of inadequacy or fear of loss or deprivation you can turn and try to transform that into the values that you all share well i know that by that we both uh value uh family or we both value uh wanting to be there for each other so when she maybe lashes out because i'm driving a little crazy or 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 scares her and i'm feeling oh that's uh she's she's saying that i can't drive or protect the things that they do all these like deep rooted stuff i can go back and say oh okay this is i want to protect her we value uh each other we love each other and i can transform those emotions into something a little more productive and recognize that we are connected and have compassion for where we each other are coming from 
And that goes to number two, having that emotional attunement. Um, we're not saying that you as a guy have to become a woman or a woman has to become a guy, you know, we have to talk it all out or, or, you know, shoulder to shoulder, rough and tough it or and things of nature, but being emotionally attuned, being able to empathize with your partner, to be able to recognize where they're coming from. And again, recognizing impact over intent. That's something that's, um, that's talked about quite often in there and that it's not, it's, it's not your responsibility to try to get them to understand where you're coming from, but it is, if you want a healthy relationship, your responsibility to try to understand where they're coming from. So regardless of your intent, if you can be emotionally attuned to the, to the impact and to their emotions and have empathy, uh, it can strengthen uh, the connection between you two. Uh, number three, again, validating those feelings, validating those emotions, you know? So if, for instance, uh, if I'm out or, late again for another family social setting that I said I was going to be at because I'm at work trying to to provide my partner may be upset and say hey you know this I can't believe I see you less now that we're together or married and as opposed to arguing or fussing hey I'm out here doing this for you even though that may be valid may be true it's more powerful to be hey I I understand. I wish I could be here too. I know we uh, love and, and miss each other and want to be each other. And uh, I wish I could be uh, here more often as well. It doesn't make me feel good as well. And a hug and, and share. That's validating, empathizing, and not trying to um, rationalize where uh, you or that person, um, where you may be coming from. It's more connecting. And this all leads to building that trust and that intimacy. And intimacy doesn't just be is just not in the bedroom but it is it's something that's taking place throughout the day and that you can be intentional about that you can form a habit of of building trust and being intimate by being uh very intentional and actually one of my favorite things about this book is the power love formula and that's number five that is state oh i didn't put it up here oh my goodness okay so the power love formula is pretty cool uh it's really four things that you can do john brown i want to share this Let's see how can i share this uh, hmm, I wonder if I just copy and paste it right here. Or, let's see, if I come over here. Oh, that's my pretty lady. Let's see. If I hit escape, and I'm just going to run over and paste it in. Ooh, that's a lot right there. Let's see if it shrinks down, and I'll clean it up a little bit later. Yikes. Now everything's going off. This is hilarious. Let's see. All right. Boom. I wonder if I could have paused the actual presentation. But either way, one of the things it says is take time to focus on your spouse at least four times a day. And the four times that it recommends is when you wake up, focus on those values, those things that you care about and love about that person. Um, when you leave home, focus on that. When you return home and before you go to sleep. Other thing that it is suggested that you hug your partner six times a day for at least six seconds. Six times six is 36 seconds, I believe. I, did, I taught second grade, so uh, you can, if I'm wrong. <laughs> Anyways, so there's something scientific about when you're hugging someone for a certain amount of time, the oxycodone, the, all that good stuff starts rolling through and you being intentional about that is pretty cool. I like to layer it when before I leave and when I return, when I wake up and all that. So it's like, you know, on top of each other. Um, also being... Focus on the positive, being able to think about the positive things that you and your fa your relation your partner have done and are doing and are are geared to do is a very beautiful thing. You know, being present and future focused is a very beautiful and powerful uh, thing. And committing to some daily action that demonstrates your love. I like to give my fiance a love note every day because it helps me be positive. It helps me think about and see the things that I'm grateful for. And if I can practice having my eyes see gratitude, I see more gratitude and it keeps me closer to my source of power and it helps me um, recognize uh, uh, the beauty of our relationship. And when we do have those challenging times, like anybody has, I can remember to connect to our values. And uh, yeah, it's very timely for me as you uh, as I showed just a few seconds ago, because uh, I was married now. Well, I'm not married now, but I'm getting married and it's going to be beautiful to the beautiful Michelle Chambers. Woohoo! And it's a wonderful thing, and I'm very excited about that. So not only does this book help me hopefully communicate with people more, but obviously communicate with her uh, more. And 
Uh, yeah. And so, yeah, that's that's it. This is Courtney Rollins, a state pro service. Take the heart, head, hands on approach um, to helping people through the probate process. And uh, today was a little bit different, but I like to do stuff a little different sometimes. And I will continue to because we're talking about life. We're talking about life's biggest transition. So um, definitely check out the book and I'll put it up here one more one more again. The how to improve your marriage without talking about it. And no, that's me and my boom, 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 boom. There we go. Yeah, by Dr. Patricia Love and Dr. Stephen Stonesy. Check it out. I think it's pretty awesome. I think I'm going to be reading it at least once a year just to uh, keep, you know, dig deeper. Courtney Rollins, Life and Transitions Experts. Let your light shine. Peace.